Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Jerry. My pups' names are Sunny and Riley. And each week we talk with different therapy dog teams around the world about the impact that they're making in their area. If you're just getting started or not sure where to get started, we have a free guide that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. And we also have a community you can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. Today, we're going to be talking with Jessica and Hera all the way in Canada. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more about their story. They have over 10 years of therapy experience, some with Hera and some with Harry. So we'll get to know a little bit more about them as soon as we get them in here. How are you? Hi. I'm great. Well, (laughs) Jessica, for those who don't know you, would you like to introduce us to yourself and your pup? Sure. This is Hera. And I'm Jessica. We live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, which is near Rockies. And we've been doing therapy dogs since April 2012. And Kira is my second therapy dog in this That's journey. Awesome. So. And who are you all registered through, Jessica? We are volunteering through PALS. PALS is called Pet Asset League Society. It's a non-for-profit volunteer-based organization established since 1985, I believe. (laughs) There's about 300 to 400 active volunteers. There's about 200 to 300 active therapy dogs and about a dozen therapy cats and getting picked right now. There was some bunnies involved in the past, and I think there was one mini horse even. That's awesome. I see some love for pals in the comments coming from some cats actually joining in today. <laughs> is pals specifically in Alberta, or is, there, is it Canada-wide? It's local, okay. so it's local Calgary-based organization. So we visit, I think, about 40 to 60 facilities okay. within Calgary. Cool. So. Jessica, how did you first find out about therapy dogs? I'm always looking for like interesting things to do with my dogs and Michelle Kempenich, one of our good friends, she had a therapy cat at that time. And that therapy cat was a really good friend of Harry's. There was one photo actually of my dog Harry hanging out in the cat tree with the cats, just hanging out and chill. <laughs> she was the one who recognized Harry's talent of calming people and thought he would be a great therapy dog. So she encouraged me to look into pals and I did. And I'm amazed with the volunteers in this therapy program community. I made some great friends there. That's just great. Um, did anything surprise you along your journey to becoming a therapy dog team when you first started? The love of dog, <laughs> the magic powers they have. So we do regular visit at the local hospital. We visit the long-term care transitional units. We don't ever do solo visit. That's a part of the policy. So we go as a team and it's so cool when you have the dogs going in the unit and it's like your ultimate squad goal. <laughs> you go in there, you visit nurses and staff and the people. Everybody who see the dog, they just beam up. Their energy just suddenly becomes super happy. In the hospital environment, as soon as you enter, you kind of sense the sadness, the calm, and the dawn. But as soon as the dog enters, everything changes and that magic is priceless. When you go there, the energy level just bumps up really quick within seconds and everybody's so super happy and you hear the amazing story. We go there and the patient themselves or the family member or the staff member would be like, this is magic. We haven't seen this person or smiled since, or the person may refuse to talk to anybody because they have been just not happy, right? But when the dog's there, they are open to the dog. Sometimes they don't even see us there. Well, just the chauffeurs, really. They are there with the dog. They talk to the dogs and they just pet the dogs and then start telling them the stories, their happy times or Anything that happened that day or that year or any major events in their life, they'll be just talking to the dogs and it's amazing. That's awesome. So you started out with Harry and now you have Hera. What has been your experiences with them? Have they approached the job differently or the same? How do their little personalities come through? I would say they 
both naturally know who needs to talk to, who needs more support. They are the ones letting me know who needs more time with them, that kind of thing. But Harry is very calm and collected. He is always there and I just chill and he would climb onto the person's chest or in their lap and just like put his head down there and just let them soak up his positive energy. And for the kids' reading session, he would crawl into their little laps and sometimes he fell asleep. Every story is like a bedtime story for Harry. He's so chill. He also slightly different. She's very calm, but she's more playful. She would engage the person, she'll pot the person, she'll ask for belly rub, and she'll flip over, you have to catch her kind of thing. She loves going from bed to bed, visiting everybody. She loves kids, she loves fist bumped kids, and kids love that too. Yeah, just little things like that, they definitely do slightly different, and people react differently with either dogs. I think every single dog has different approach to their work. But so cute. Yeah, I love that. Will she give you a little fist bump right now? Yeah, she wants to tell you that. Jessica, how did you know that your dogs would enjoy being therapy dogs? I know they love people. I think the interaction with people, they are very curious. They are very confident. And every single opportunity, they see it as making a new friend. She is a social butterfly. She loves to go different places. Her maiden name is actually Dora. Dora the Explorer. She loves just going new places and looking at new things and trying new things and getting new experience. So I think those are good qualities to have. Yeah, as I love like therapy dog. I would definitely agree. What was your training process like for your dogs? Did they have similar training process? What kind of stood out to you along that path? I'm very lucky that way. Both of them, I did basic obedience and stuff like that. But when they came to me, they are already very well socialized with everything because Harry was actually a show dog for the first few months of his life, age four months to seven months-ish. He was a show dog traveling in UK and Ireland. <laughs> At that time, I had another dog who had cancer and I was talking to my friend who's a breeder, saying I need another dog, but need a very calm dog to keep my other dog company. And she said, oh, Harry is not really enjoying the show business, so maybe you can have him as the companion. So I got him that way. He was well-traveled with people, cats, animals, and grooming. He was excellent. When he came here, we still did basic obedience training, rally obedience. Here at similar, they were hoping she would be a show dog, but she stopped growing. So she got the basic training of grooming and getting used to people of all ages and cats. But both dogs, as soon as we got them. We start with basic obedience, which I think every single dog should do. Not because of the dog, but human. It's good to be in those classes. I really appreciate the feedback, the input, the teacher uh, observe of how I interact with the dog and give me feedback and tips and tricks to communicate and bond with my dogs better. So after basic obedience, we did rally obedience as well. It's really fun if you don't know much about that sport. I highly recommend you Google it and look into it. Rally Obedience is a fun part of the obedience trial. And it's about reading different signs and you tell your dog what needs to be done. And it's really fun and the dog really have to pay attention to you and all that stuff. It's a great bonding exercise, I would say. So those are the good beginning things to have. We also do a lot of exposure training. We look for all the possible dog-friendly events. So for example, we have those open markets in Calgary. So we'll go there. Our local business will set up vendors as a group. So it's super crowded and busy. And that's a great way for the dogs to know how to best behave in a crowd with all the other dogs and people there and how to greet people properly and get used to noises. Another thing we do is we eat out a lot with her and Harry. So there is actually a fun activity in Calgary called Popsim Poseco, I think. So the restaurant being room, they collaborate with the training facility Dogma. So they do training on the dog friendly patio. So humans can have a Poseco and the dog trainer is teaching us how to have the proper social etiquette when the dog is in the 
food area and the dogs need to behave and we teach them basic tricks. She learned hi-fi there. It's a fun activity. So we do a lot of those kind of things with the dogs. We seek out opportunities to get them exposure, going to Lowe's, wherever we can go, we take them. So a lot of exposure, I think that will prepare them for those situations. You're definitely getting a lot of love in the comments here. Sienna and Fergus said they miss Harry and that he's a special little guy. And puppies and Fergus were agreeing that rally obedience just builds a great bond between the dog and the human as well. Yeah. I saw the significance Harry has there for you. And Terry also on that team? Yes. I've always had Maltese. That's why my handle, Instagram handle is Maltese. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because I grew up with Maltese. My mom loved Maltese, but we were never breeders. We were just pet owners, but I love Maltese. Yeah. Uh, not all of them can be a messy yes. dog, though. So I have to I tell people that all of them are lovely. All of them have the potential. A small dog can be trained, but you really need to put in the effort to socialize them and to train them. And also you need to see if the dog actually enjoy it or not. Yeah. Just like people, like a nice person may not enjoy doing therapy work. So a nice dog may not enjoy therapy visits. So every time when people say, oh, what kind of breed is that? I need to get that dog. Usually small dogs are not that calm. And I said, well, yeah. you can get any dog. Really, it's the effort you need to put into it. any dog can be yeah. a therapy dog. If the dog Have you had any learnings from working and volunteering with small dogs? Is there anything that stands out to you in terms of environments that have been a better fit for them or anything like that? Well, they have a secret advantage. They're small. <laughs> so they fit into everybody's bed, everybody's lap. A lot of times when I take her to the place, she has a doggy carrier. And we show up and people sometimes like, where's your dog? <laughs> it was like, she's in my bed. So the advantage of having a small dog in addition to being able to sit in people's lap and sit on the, a table like this, a lot of times she sits on those beds, over the bed tray table, like in the hospital or in people's lap for wheelchair people, is some people are afraid of big dogs. And when they see Hera, they are less likely to be scared. So there was actually one person super scared of dogs and some nurses too scared of dogs. But when they see her, they'll be like, no, I'm scared. Sorry, I can't touch her. But once they start to see other people's interaction with her, there's quite a few cases like, oh, excuse me, sorry, I changed my mind. Can I pet her? Or is it okay if I hold her? <laughs> Some people change their mind after they observe. And because she's so tiny, a lot of people see her as less intimidating. Looks almost like a stuffed animal. So it's easier for her to gain people's trust. Right. I love that it. Way. Jessica, is there a story that stands out to you as you think over your experiences that's just a really good example of why you enjoy volunteering with your dogs? All those special moments, the happy tears they shared, the stories. I think those are really precious to me. Some of the ones I can think of, it's really magical. Like I actually got to witness dementia patients, remember Harry's name and remember Hira's name. And some patients would paint them, draw them. And there's like a tough biker never has a smile very serious face and not happy that he's in the hospital but when he see the dogs he couldn't help but look at talking baby talk like oh they kind of thing and then wants to hug harry and just cuddle up and like he won't let harry go and even nurses are like can i get a hug from the dog and oh you made my day my week that kind of thing and occasionally we'll run into doctors that had a really bad day and the doctors are like running into us in the hallway and say like, I'm not a scheduled visit. Can I get a hug from the dog that I really needed today? It doesn't take a lot from us and we're lucky to have the dogs that we can offer and the dogs love it too. They got extra hugs and attention and I think the magic in them is really magnified through this whole therapy dog visit experience for me. I love dogs. Growing up with dogs, I knew they are very special. I love them. But through this experience, they are really, truly magical. Dogs, cats, 
guinea pigs in doing this business. They're people's expression, they warm up, they bing up. <laughs> really, like, it's different energy. Like, in the hospice, patients don't want to talk. As soon as they see the dog, they're like, God, my angels, my presence, and they become very positive, and they are like, oh, I'm sure I'll see you in heaven. Super positive experience, even in a sad place, and those are the kind of moments I really treasure, and I think all the therapy dog teams would have something similar to share like that. That's really great. Do you have any advice for someone who's interested in becoming a therapy dog team? I would say if you're interested in becoming a therapy dog team, to make sure you have the time and commitment. So the schedule is really flexible. But once you start visiting people and seeing people, especially kids or people long-term care, they really look forward to see the dogs, those scheduled times. So it's really rewarding, but you need to make sure you have the time for it. And also, I would say most important thing thing that I never really thought about until I joined PALS is be your dog's advocate because they are so good. They want to be there to serve. They want to be there to help. But you need to watch out for their stress, their calming signals. Just like humans, you have those one-off days. You get tired, you need to rest. So cut the visit short if needed, nothing bad about it. PALS have a new policy. They try to ask us not to have back-to-back visits, like ideally have a day in between so the dog can recharge and be ready and be present for the next visit. About the calming signals, I think that's really important to do. I think we learned that about 15, 18 years ago when that just became popular. We actually went to workshop and we got a DVD about coming signal for your dogs. You can probably look it up on YouTube so you can read your dog's body language. I think it's super important to be aware of their stress level and know your dog and do self-care for yourself and your dog as well. Because just like healthcare providers, there's always a need for self-care and plan for your dog's retirement. So when I noticed Harry was slowing down and he gets tired after 40 minutes or so, I realized it was time for us to consider his retirement. So those are little things that you need to watch out for and retire your dog when the dog starts to get tired and needs more private time. That's really great advice. Is there anything else that you really wanted to share while you're here, Jessica? I want to say that it's really rewarding. I super encourage everybody to look into it. If you first join and you got assigned to a web facility and your dog doesn't like it or you don't like it, try another one. I always joke it's kind of like our career. If you don't like it, you find another one. Trying a different fit and in all the different variety of environments, you'll find something that you will like and your dog will like. Oh, I forgot to share funny stories, too. Is it okay if I share a couple of funny stories? Well, as you can see, she's very small. So when I carry her through the hospital, the most frequent questions I got asked is, is that a real dog? From someone who had never seen her before. There was one time, the ultimate funny story I tell everybody was that it was Halloween. So she was wearing this costume. As a little nurse, and so she was dressed up to visit everybody. And I put her from bed to bed to bed like that. So, and she was dressed up like this. And I put her up and visit everybody. And there was a little lady sitting there. I put her the table over the bed. I said, would you like to pet her? And she said, sure. And she was petting her. And she said, what's her name? And stuff. And then. She asked me, oh, this is so cute. Where did you get it? And I was like, oh, I got it on Amazon. Like, isn't that cute? And she was like, oh, my God. They sell everything nowadays, even blinks and everything. And then I realized she was asking about here and not the costume. So I was like, no, this is a real dog. I got a costume from Amazon and I got her from a breeding. That was so funny. 
that. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> That's great. Winston says they like laughing. And I know someone was asking for a funny story earlier as well. There's been quite a few comments here. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the funniest one ever. Yeah. That, like I can remember. So. Because she was genuinely thought I got to. Fun. You definitely have everyone <laughs> laughing in the comments. Bubbles, Bergens, Leo, and Stella. Everyone, everyone enjoyed that story. <laughs> that's so great. Awesome. Very cool. Where does her like volunteering the most? What's her favorite environment? I think she loves the hospitals because she got to go from bed to bed to bed. And she loves the story times because the kids will come and carefully select the book they want to read to her. And after they finish the session, they'll get a little bit of bug from here. At. We just signed up the airport. So I think she would enjoy airports because it's a lot of people, a lot of noise and a lot of walking. Which is good because she gets a little bit <laughs> weight. We all. <laughs> I love it. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and Haru with us today. I really appreciate it. If people want to follow your journey, they can find you at Maltese R Us, right? Awesome. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. Take thank care. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye.